the second part of class today, talk about a different type of element we're going to model, and that's the structure of the building. Okay, and we've been sort of playing around putting floors and walls and curtain walls and roofs on things, making some very broad assumptions about what the structure may look like. But today we're actually going to start putting beams and beam systems and just the detailed structural elements. And it's very nice to go ahead and think about those things, even as part of your architectural design. Not that you are ultimately going to go through and size all those elements. You still will probably be working with someone who's doing the structural engineering who will go through and do the detailed analysis and apply the loads and really size those members. But if you can, in your model, encode your intent, oh, I'd really like the beams to be here and here and the columns to come down this way, that it's giving the structural engineer something to work with to help just communicate what your design intent was. It's always good for us to try and you know, just think through what the structural system is in the same way that we should think through what the materials and the lighting will be you know, structure is not an afterthought. If we do it very, very well, some of our most beautiful buildings are ones where the structure is really a very integral piece of the building. It's really a featured aspect of it, not just something we hid behind a lot of veneer panels. Okay, so structure is a very good thing to appreciate right up front. So we want to give you a way to start thinking about it early on. Okay, it's going to start with the whole notion of basically... Oh, just setting up grids and then adding elements to our model. And to get us started with that, what I'm going to do is shift on over to, where am I going? Make that big again. I will say open. And what I will do is go on out to, I'm going to go back out to the L drive again and find something. There's a file out there that's a good one to start with. You can get it there or you can get it out there on coursework, either one. Session 14, and I'm going to grab the one that says structural framing starting point. Say okay to that. And what we're going to be bringing in is actually just a system of grid lines. It's really just lines which are indicating the locations of where some of my columns are going to be and how I want to lay out the building. Now, these grid lines I've already set up. It's for a design that I have in mind. This is going to be, I'd call it an arc-shaped building. It's going to have a gentle sweep to it. It's kind of like the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas or something like that. Just sort of a gentle sweep. Okay? And in terms of these different grid lines, I've created the grid lines. I've taken a grid, and I've read a radial array. So these ones that are radiating out from that point, I've arrayed around evenly. These other ones, which are arced, I created by creating them and offsetting them the same distance. And it's actually a little bit complicated to set up that grid, so I'm not going to do it in class. We can lose a lot of people there, so it's really more important to put the structural elements on the grid. Let me set up a very simple grid so that you can just sort of get an idea of what the grids are like, and then we'll go through and place some structural elements using the grids. Grids are actually right up here. Let me pop back over to the Home tab. Grids are right next to levels. They appear when we're in plan views. I can choose the grid tool, and at its simplest level, I'm just going to go through and drag grid lines out. Okay. Now, grids really don't have any meaning other than as serving as a referencing system. It's just axes that we can use to place walls or place things on those grids. And the nice thing about using grids is as follows. They have these designations. They have numbers to them, like G and H. Those are the latest numbers, or those are the numbers that appeared after the ones that are in that sort of radial array downstairs there. Let me pull down here. For this one, what I'm going to do is actually change it. So instead of being I, I'm going to go through and make it grid line 1 instead. Change its label. Oh, actually, one's already in use downstairs on that other grid. Let me make it to 10. That'll be a little bit easier. And now I can go through and create some more grids, home, grid. And again, this system is really just all about locating things. There's grid 11. I'll put grid 12 out here. What it's doing is it's picking up the last number, and it's just kind of continuing from there. So the idea is as follows. If I come in and I want to choose a specific location, that intersection right there, I can refer to as G10. 
I don't have to say, oh, the lower right-hand corner of the building or the southeast corner of the building or something that might be a little imprecisely misinterpreted. Okay, I'm going to say that's specifically G10, and everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about at that location. So as we work with bigger buildings, it's actually very ha handy and helpful to go through and set up these grids. Now, what do you do with the grids after you set them up? They're really just a referencing system, so I can do things. I can place columns on the grids. We'll do that in just a moment. I can use the grids to place walls. Let me show you what that might look like. I'll grab some walls. I'll just go ahead and grab these concrete walls. Kind of stretch them out there. I didn't place them on the grids, but what I'm going to do is use my align tool to bring them to the grids. And how I'm going to do that is under modify, I'll say align. I'll just grab the grid line and choose the center line, and I'll lock it. I can use the align tool to grab the grid line, the center line, and I'll lock it. Yes, Farzan? Sometimes when you see the lock sign but you don't lock it at the moment, and you switch away, you lose that lock. Yeah. Is there any quick way to get back? It's generally to try to do the re... Oh, actually, let's take that back. You can realign it. Let me show what Farzan is asking about. If I say like this... Okay, and just say, no, I don't want to lock that right now. It goes away. What can we do? I think what I would do then is actually just do, it's going to sound weird, but I'm going to realign it. I'm going to align that, and I'm going to choose the center line of the wall. Can you see down at the bottom right, left-hand corner, it says 8 concrete wall, 8-inch reference? Okay, and lock it again, even though it didn't move it. It might be helpful for you to move it away and then bring it back again. But there's no easy way just to grab it again. Now, the reason I like putting things aligning to grids is, oh, what I'll typically do is actually run my dimensions to the grid lines. I'll put a dimension from here to here. We like grid line dimensions because they're real easy to spot and lay out a building that way. So. If I want to go through and change the shape of my building, or the size of my building, I can go through and grab the grid line. I'll see that's 64 feet, and if I really want that to be 60 feet instead, I could just change the dimension, and the walls will move that way. So it's nice to hang things off the grids. If you hang them off the grids and things need to change, your base size goes from 25 feet to 22 feet, just everything moves very dynamically that way. So, just a really good way of laying out a building. Okay. We're going to use this same notion of grids to go through and lay out our building. So again, over here, grids, we just choose the grid tool. And we create the grid lines. We can draw the lines. Another way we can create grids, let me just kind of show you that real quickly, is I already have some grids. I can choose the grid tool. Let me choose it over here. And I can use this thing where I pick it and I enter an offset. Let me put an offset of, say, 20 feet. Then I can add another grid, add another grid, add another grid. Offsetting is a very nice way. And in big buildings, we often do that. The grids will be at very regular spacings like that. And that's a quick way of grabbing a whole bunch of them. Okay, but... Let me get rid of those grids so they don't confuse us, because we're going to focus on these grids which have been created right down here, this radial grid system and these arc grids. Okay, Those arc grids, are I created those with the offset. That way it always traced the same profile, and I didn't have to worry about relocating the center. So I got my grids down. What we're going to start with from a structural standpoint is actually just putting some columns in there. So columns are going to be fairly easy to place. We're going to find that instead of just being architectural columns, they're structural columns, and we can choose their type. If there's some grid or columns that we want that aren't currently loaded, we can load them from the library, setting their height. And we can place them by clicking on locations and rotating the columns into place. So let's start with that. We'll come back over. Let me kind of even zoom on in here a little bit closer so you can sort of see. I want to put a column right at that intersection. What I'm going to do is go to the column tool and choose structural column. I'll say, oh, do I want the square column or the round column or maybe the wide flange steel column? Not any of those. I'm going to actually go out and load a different one. I'm going to load from the, arc, uh, the uh, 
library. I'll say structural columns, concrete. I'm going to get a rectangular one. Again, don't worry if you're not keeping up. You can just use the square one or the round one. That's okay, too. It's not going to be too critical for what we're doing today. I can choose one of the column sizes. Again, these sizes are really just sort of a preliminary guess based on my intuition about what I've seen in some of my past buildings. If this is wrong, no worries. When I do the analysis and do the resizing, those changes will percolate back into my model here. Correct, correct. If you want to make a different size, it's as easy as we'll just change the type properties and I can duplicate it the way we have been doing and then change the sizes in there. Just like doors and windows. So I'm going to grab that oh, 18 by 24 column and I'm going to place it right on this grid. Let me zoom on even closer so I can show you just really precisely how it's being placed. Now notice when I try to place it, it doesn't line it up with the grid very well. It keeps it in the XY system, but it's not really aligning to my grid. So what I can do is, if I want to rotate that, try hitting the space bar, and it will rotate around trying to orient itself to the grid. Okay. So I'll space that over. I kind of want it oriented that way. When I'm happy, I can click. That column's in place. I can then go on over to the next grid location. There it is. If I want to put one up here, I can space and rotate it around. When I'm happy with the orientation, I'll put it in there. Notice as I'm putting them in here, I'm specifying a height, and I'm specifying what, specifying what level to go up to. I'll go up to level two. And I will come on down here, and I'll put the third one in. And I'll space bar a few times and say, OK. Now, you guys know me pretty well now in terms of doing things that are repetitive. I hate doing things that are repetitive like this. So there's always a shortcut, and I'll always show you what that shortcut is. There's this fantastic mode up here called placing them on grids. And placing on grids says, you know, if you're going to put grids down there, why don't you just show me what grid lines you have inter you're interested in, and anywhere there's an intersection, I'll put a column there. Okay, so let's take a look at that. I'll zoom on out. I got all my grid lines hanging around in there, no worries. I'll go back to column, structural column, and say on grids instead. And what I can do is actually just choose a grid line. And what happens is as soon as I choose an intersection, I control click to get the intersection, you'll see what happens is at that intersection of those two grid lines, it kind of ghosts in, oh, here's a candidate. If you'd like me to put a column there, you can say OK and select this. But it's, that's what's happening at the intersection. Let me click this one. Oh, there's another good one. I can intersect these grids, too, and then I get some more columns. Isn't that nice? It tries to be smart. So I'm going to control, click, control, click, control, click, and control, click. And what I've done is I've placed almost all my columns. I'm still out these three columns on the front row. I'm going to go back and put them in a second because I've already put some over here. So I'm going to make that a separate selection. But when I'm happy with these selections, I say finish the selection. Actually, I lost that one there. Control, 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 control. Finish. And what I've done is actually created like a little minefield, this little mini stone hedge of all these like uh, columns. Would it, just, would it be repetitive columns if you place them twice? Yes, it would actually put two on top of each other. Okay, which could be okay because I could always go back and delete one. Yeah, I would say this tool is good for getting started, but you could always go back and move and edit and change the columns a little bit. But it's a good starting point. It's just really quick. Let me go through. I'll put some more columns in there for those final locations. Again, I'm going to do this as a separate operation just because I'm going to only select some of the grids. I'm going to select that front grid, but the second time I'm only going to grab one, two, and three. Now see if you can get your columns in there and come up with something that looks like this. Okay, we doing good? We got columns? Yep. Excellent. 